the investigation of life itself, which is basically a structured water phenomenon, is why does a cell lose its charge? Well, there's been centuries of research into how this sodium-potassium distribution happens, and I don't know how many Nobel Prizes awarded. They figured it out. It's, there's a sodium-potassium pump embedded in the membrane. And they have pictures of it, and you can, you can know all the protein subtype, subtypes, and all this has been figured out. And so you can, uh, you can clearly see that the reason why the sodium-potassium has the distribution that it does, low sodium in the inside, high on the outside, is because there's a pump in the membrane, looks like a merry-go-round, it binds sodium in the inside, potassium on the outside, then it circles around, dumps the potassium on the inside, and, and dumps the sodium on the outside. That creates the separation of charges, which creates voltage across the cell wall, which creates the distribution of the cells, and allows the cell to do work. Great. We figure that out. We have drugs that affect the sodium-potassium pump. The whole thing is brilliant. And then a guy named Gilbert Link comes along, and he did something very interesting. He isolated the pump and figured out how much energy it would take to run the pump to create this distribution. And what he figured out, apparently for the first time, and it's about a 200-page proof, so it's long and tedious, I must admit. But he figured out that it would take about 300 times the amount of energy available to the cell in total to run this pump. In other words, it's like you have a mortgage of $9,000 a month for your house and your salary is $2,000. Eventually, A, you're going to lose the house, and B, you're not going to have enough money to do anything else, like eat. Uh, and it's simply the math doesn't add up. Uh, so, uh, you know, I like to say there is no pump. The pump is a myth. It's nonsense. There is a pump, but it's like a backup system, which rarely gets used. And the other interesting thing about this is you can take this cell and you can poke a number of holes in it, like hundreds, and it still maintains the same charge and the same sodium-potassium distribution, which essentially means you can get rid of the cell membrane where the pump is supposedly residing, and it doesn't affect the distribution of sodium-potassium. So the whole thing is basically a myth. So then he had to answer the question then, well, so how does this distribution come about if it's not this mythical pump? And here the answer essentially tells the whole story. He said, this, the, the water in the cell is not water. It's a very specific gel form, which has specific bond angles, which creates a kind of framework or mesh inside the cell. And again, I like to talk in analogies here. It's like a mosquito netting. There's a little bit of a difference here. But so the, the size of the mosquito netting is so organized so you keep the mosquitoes out and let the air in. And if it's too small, the mesh, the air doesn't get in and that doesn't work. And if the mesh is too big, then the mosquitoes get in and it doesn't work. By some quirk of nature, supposedly, or God, or however one wants to think of this, this etheric force, the, the mesh of a gel is the perfect size to, by itself, hang on to potassium and exclude sodium. So there's no energy needed to do this sodium-potassium distribution. It's simply... That's how life happened in animal systems, in animal cells. The mesh had to be a certain size, and only structured or gel phase water has that size, which by itself uh, attaches to potassium and excludes sodium. And so that's the answer.